Hello and welcome to the summary of the sixth and final book in this Dune series, Chapter House Dune. Now, if you'd like a recap on any of the other previous books, I have those in a playlist on my channel. You can check those out. I thought that this would be the last of it, but I saw that there are some companion books as well that Herbert had written. I might check some of those out. Anything but the inner workings of the Bene Gesserit, because we've had about over 1,200 pages of that at this point. So this book takes place on the planet Chapter House. And here we have the continuation of the battle between the Reverend Mothers, the Bene Gesserit, and the Honored Matre. I have a much more positive review of this one. I liked it a lot more, but there was still 600 pages, which means there was some filler. Either way, this was just an excellent ending to an almost year-long reading project at this point. We did it. Feel free to share your thoughts. Anyway, on to the summary. This story starts on the planet Chapter House, a place there called Central, where the Bene Gesserit now reside, with Odrade as Mother Superior. Central is an impressive establishment with sprawling orchids, a living jewel, Odrade calls it. At this time, Odrade is celebrating the birth of a new Gola baby, who just so happens to be her father. The old Bashar, Miles Tegg, had indeed been the Mother Superior's father, and Odrade herself had collected cells as fingernail scrapings to grow this new Gola, part of a long possibility plan should they ever succeed in duplicating the Tselaksu tanks. She tells the young Miles Tegg later, I took tiny scrapings from his neck, skin of his cells, and they held all we needed to bring you to life. So why do the sisters need another Gola? Well, Tegg might also be useful against the enemies of the Bene Gesserit, the Honored Matres. Tegg, if his original memories could be restored, the sisterhood once more would have the finest Bashar ever to serve them, a Mentat Bashar, a military genius whose prowess was already the stuff of myths in the old empire. The Anat Matre still pose an existential threat to the Bene Gesserit, having already destroyed 16 of the planets that they inhabited. At this time, they're hunting for the location of Chapter House. We're reminded though about the original mysterious Teg from Heretics. Teg represented too many disturbing unknowns and possibilities Mystery surrounded the period before his death in the destruction of Dune. He did something on Gamu to ignite the unbridled fury of the Honored Matres. His suicidal stand on Dune should not have been enough to bring this berserk response. There were rumors, bits and pieces from his days on Gamu before the Dune disaster. He could move too fast for the human eye to see. The Honored Matres also have a kind of mother superior of their own called the Great Honored Matre, and she currently has held captive a Bene Gesserit named Sabanda. But Sabanda is proving difficult to probe. This Bene Gesserit was a teacher on her previous planet and the Great Honored Matre tells her that none of her young pupils were left alive when they took her. The Great Honored Matre is also under the impression that the young ones were being taught to worship Shayana. Odd though how this cult of Shayana persisted. It would have to be rooted out of course, destroyed the way the witches themselves were being destroyed. She eventually kills Sabanda and swears to find the hiding place of the other sisters. It's only a matter of time, she says. When he was seven, Miles Tegg was already showing the mental brilliance coupled to holographic memory that had caused the sisterhood to place such heavy responsibilities on his previous incarnation. The young Miles Tegg had been studying the life of Tegg before him, the history of Caladan, and even the history of Rakus and the sandworms. One evening, we see Odrade worried about the fate of not only the sisterhood, but Shayana, Duncan Idaho, and Tegg. Where to run and who might escape? Who might be captured? Those were the real questions. What if they captured Shayana down there at the edge of the new desert waiting for sandworms? That might never appear. Shayana plus the sandworms, a potent religious force Onnit Matres might know how to exploit. And what if the Onnit Matres captured Gola Idaho or Gola Teg? There might never again be a hiding place if one of those possibilities occurred. The exact whereabouts of Duncan are revealed then. On impulse, Odrade punched up the call symbols and stared at a projection above the table. The no-ship sitting on the ground at the chapter house space field, a giant bump of mysterious machinery separated from time. Over the years of its semi-dormancy, it had depressed a great sunken area into the landing flat, becoming almost wedged there. It was a great lump its engines ticking away, only enough to keep it hidden from prescient searchers, especially from guild navigators who would take a special joy in selling out the Bene Gesserit. Why had she called up this image just now? Because of the three people confined there. Saitel, the last surviving Tlaxu master, Mubella, they captured on at Matre, and Duncan Idaho. Mubella and Duncan, the sexually bonded pair, held as much by their mutual entrapment as they were by the no-ship. The sisters then get word that Lamparas, another jewel in the sisterhood's network of planets, home of their most prized school, had been destroyed, and no survivors were left. Even Lucilla, Odrade asked, the Reverend Mother Lucilla, Vice-Chancellor of Lamparas, 
had been instructed to flee at the first sign of trouble, taking with her as many of the doomed as she could store in other memory. The spies said all dead, Belonda insisted. It was a chilling signal to surviving Bene Gesserit you may be next. We find Lucilla on Gamu where she decided to seek refuge, her nose ship damaged, not really able to go any further. She got lucky, she didn't feel lucky, as she looked out the second story window of this isolated Gamu farmhouse. The window was opened and an afternoon breeze carried the inevitable smell of oil, something dirty in the smoke of a fire out there. The Harakonans had left their oily mark on this planet so deep it might never be removed. Her contact here was a retired Sukh doctor, but she knew him as much more, something secret that only a limited number in the Bene Gesserit shared it. Later, Lucilla does learn that the rabbi will sell her out to the Onnit Matres, though. The Matres have a spy on Gamu in the secret society. Shayana, meanwhile, is at the Desert Watch Station presiding over the development of sandworms, although she is aware that they may never come. We're also reminded that it was the Bene Gesserit's original plan to bond Shayana with Duncan so that they could control him and he could control her. Mubella cut that plan short short. And a good thing for both of us. Who needs a sexual obsession? But Shayana was forced to admit that she harbored oddly confused feelings about Duncan Idaho. The hand talks, the touching, and what could they say to Audrade when she came prying? Not if, but when. We talk about ways for Duncan and Mobella to escape you, Mother Superior. We talk about other ways to restore Teg's memories. We talk about our own private rebellion against the Bene Gesserit. Yes, star we Audrade. Your former student has become a rebel against you. Shayana admitted to mixed feelings about Mubella, the captured honored Matre as well. She domesticated Duncan where I might have failed. The captive honored Matre was a fascinating study and amusing at times, but I will persist. I will create my own statement of my life. I will create my own life. Damn the Bene Gesserit and I will lose the respect of my sisters. Duncan and Mubella also have three children. That was to be expected. The three children Mubella had born Idaho in the no-ship had been removed at birth. All were being observed with care as they developed. Did they have that uncanny reactive speed on it much race displayed? Too early to say. It was a thing that developed in puberty, according to Mubella. The Bene Gesserit breeding mistresses were obviously excited by it because the much race have incredible speed and nerve muscle training. Duncan is exploring exploring the no-ship, something he often does that the Bene Gesserit who are surveilling him hate because they suspect that he's looking for an escape route. He knows that the Onnit Matres are also after him. Idaho saw himself as the game they sought, wanting him even more than they wanted the woman of Chapter House. He had no illusions about what the hunters would do to him. They knew he was here. The men he trained in sexual bonding and sent out to plague the Onnit Matres, those men taunted the hunters. When the sisters learned of his mentat ability, they would know immediately that his mind carried the memories of more than one Gola lifetime. The original did not have that talent. They would suspect that he was a Kwisatz Haderach. Look how they rationed his melange. They were clearly terrified of repeating the mistake they made with Paul Atreides and his tyrant son. 3,500 years of bondage, but dealing with Mobella required mentat awareness. He entered every encounter with her, not expecting to achieve answers, then or later. It was a typical mentat approach. Constant Concentrate on the questions. Mentats accumulated questions the way others accumulated answers. Questions created their own patterns and systems. A mentat's real skill lay in that mentat construct they called the Great Synthesis. It required a patience that non-mentats did not even imagine possible. Mentat schools defined it as perseverance. You were a primitive tracker, able to read minuscule signs, tiny disturbances in the environment, and follow where these led. At the same time, you remained open to broad motions all around and within. This produced naivete, the basic mentat possible posture, akin to that of truthsayers, but far more sweeping. Over the years of his confinement, these quarters had taken on a lived-in appearance. This was his cave, the former supercargo suite, large rooms with slightly curved walls, bedroom, library, workroom, sitting room, a green tiled bath with dry and wet cleansing systems, and a long practice hall he shared with Mubella for exercise. The rooms bore a unique collection of artifacts and marks of his presence. That sling chair placed at just the right angle to the console and projector linking him to the ship's systems, those Rodulian records on that low side table, and there were stains of occupancy, the dark brown blot on the work table, 
spilled food had left its indelible mark. The Telaxu Sai tale is also captured on the no ship. When the women of Shaitan had plucked him from the hands of the whores, promising sanctuary and every assistance, he had known them false. In their wild anger, honored Matres had destroyed Dune, only known natural source of melange. Still unthinking of consequences, odd that, they had eliminated the Telaxu, whose accidental tongues had flooded the old empire with spice. And we have creatures capable of recreating Dune. We also may have the only living Tilaxu master locked in Saitel's mind, the way to turn Axel Tiltanks into a melange cornucopia, if we can get him to reveal it. Odrade is thinking all of this, by the way, so we get a little insight into the Bene Gesserit's purpose for keeping Saitel there. Lucilla, meanwhile, is in a cage in the custody of the Onnit Matres, with the Great One questioning her. Miles Teg is 10 years old at this point, and Odrade wants to send him onto the no ship with Duncan and Morbilla so that Duncan can restore his memories, even though there is concern Concern he may be too young. Teg obviously doesn't know that Odrade, who he sees as a mother, is one of his daughters. Odrade then gets word that the Futars, a kind of human cat hybrid that the Onnit Matres keep as pets, wish to ally themselves with the Reverend Mothers against the Matres. The Futars also tell the Reverend Mothers about a weapon that the Matres have, one that's capable of destruction but can only be used once. What of the Futars? Odrade asks. They match the descriptions, human in outward appearance, but with unmistakable ferocity. Cat family origins, I would judge. They speak, but it's in an abbreviated galash. Word bursts, I thought them. When eat, you nice lady, want head scratch, sit here? They appeared immediately responsive to the handlers, but not fearful. Between futars and handlers, I had the impression there was mutual respect and liking. Back to Lucilla, who has been in Matre custody now for 17 days. Lucilla knew her greatest immediate danger, that she would feel inadequate in such a setting. Her captors had her at a terrible disadvantage, but they had not destroyed her Bene Gesserit capabilities. She would will herself to die before the share in her body was depleted to the point of betrayal. She still had her mind. Lucilla's been kept in a cage next to the Futars, and she starts communicating with one of them. She tries to get it to turn on the Matres to kill the Great One, but they require a kill command from an actual handler. It's clear that the Futars have some contempt for the Matres, though, who keep them caged. After a lengthy conversation, mostly about politics, the Matre kills Lucilla with a fatal kick to the temple. On the no ship on Chapter House, Duncan finally meets Miles Tegg. Idaho remembered the aged Bashar whose cells had produced this child. A thoughtful man whose comments were to be heeded. With only a slight effort, Idaho recalled the man's manner and words. The true warrior often understands his enemy better than he understands his friends. A dangerous pitfall if you let understanding lead to sympathy as it will naturally do when left unguided. Difficult to think of the mind behind those words as latent somewhere in this child. Restoring your original memories will cause pain, physical and mental. In some ways, the mental pains are worse. I am to prepare you for that. Duncan tells him. You have Gola imposed walls around your original memories. At the proper moment, some of those memories will come flooding back. Not all memories will be pleasant. You present a special problem. For a Gola to awaken, there should be memory of death. But the cells for you do not carry death memory. But the Bashar is dead. The Bashar, yes, he's dead. You must feel that where it hurts most and know that you are are the Bashar. By the way, over the years, Duncan has also found ways of getting the nose ship to hide data for him without the Reverend Mothers knowing. You see, the Reverend Mothers have these things called com eyes that surveil the nose ship. One day while Odrade is off to see Shayana in the desert, Belonda, a mentat, also on Odrade's council, uses this opportunity to try and perhaps kill Duncan Idaho. She sees him as a threat, too dangerous to live. It puzzles her that Odrade doesn't see it. She, Belonda, fears that he might be the Kwisatz Haderach. She doesn't kill him though. She also acknowledges to herself that he's a better Mantat than she is, and she sees why Odrade values him even though he is dangerous. She also pays Shayana a visit. I knew you would come probing. The hand talk with Duncan, right? Please, Mother Superior, accept this. All of it, Shayana, Belonda says. He wants someone to rescue them if honored Matres attack. That's all? Does she think me a complete fool? No, he wants information about our intentions and what we're doing to meet the Honored Matre threat. Odrade also thinks that since one of the members of her council, Sister Talamane, is getting old, 
that Shayana should fill that role. I asked you earlier, Shayana, if you could work with Bill. It was an important question. Tam is getting very old and must be replaced soon. There must be a vote, of course. Me? It was totally unexpected. My first choice. Imperative now. I want you close where I can keep watch on you. You see, Odrede is sure that Shayana is hiding something, and after she leaves, we find out that Shayana is. Well, we actually already know this from earlier in the book, but it's mentioned again here. Even after Adrade had gone, Shayana wondered why those words had aroused such merriment. Mother Superior had been deflected though. No need even to waste her fallback position. Truth. We've been discussing the possibility that I might imprint Teg and restore the Bashar's memories that way. Full confession avoided. Mother Superior did not learn that I have weaseled out the way to reactivate our no-ship and diffuse the minds Belonda put in it. Odrade would like Mubella to work on Sightail to get information out of him. Duncan is jealous and curious about Mubella's reaction given her past as an Onut Matre and how they are with men. She says that she's revolted by the idea and then he notices that she looks at him with the same love and devotion that Lady Jess Jessica looked at the Duke. Shayana finally gets the worms to come out to develop from Sandtrout. Remember, the sisters want to turn Chapter House into a new dune so that they can have a monopoly over Melange. It's also finally time for Shayana to imprint on Teg to help him retrieve his Bashar memories. Shayana initiates a sexual encounter, which since Teg is physically not an adult, we have another word for this. Anyway, it's something very foreign to Teg, but once he realizes that she's an imprinter, he starts fighting back. You were trying to imprint me, angry accusation. You think my mother didn't teach me how to prevent that? A distant expression came over his face. Gola? Some prefer to think of you as a clone. He whirled, looking all around the room. It had been selected for its concealed access, no visible hatches. Where are we? In the no-ship you took to Dune just before you were killed there. Killed. Again, he looked at his hands. Watchers could almost see Gola imposed filters drop from his memories. I was killed. On Dune? Almost plaintive. Heroic to the end, Shayana said. My, the men I took from Gamu, were they? Onit Matre's made an example of Dune. It's a lifeless ball charred to cinders. Anger touched his features. He sat and crossed his legs, placing a clenched fist on each knee. Yes, I learned that in the history of the, of me. She remained seated on the mat quite still. This was such a plunge into memories as only one who had been through the agony could appreciate. Utter stillness was required now. Then they realized that this tech also has the ability to move at superhuman speed. In the observation room, Odrade sank into her chair and asked, What did you see, Duncan? When Shiana pushed him away from her, he turned with a swiftness I have never seen except in Mubella. Faster even than that. Perhaps it's because his body is young and we have given him Prana Bindu training. Something else. You alerted us, Duncan. An unknown in Atreides marker cells. He confirms that he doesn't know what happened on Gamu to come into these kinds of powers. He says that his physical and mental speed defies explanation. A reverent mother named Dortulja had once been sent to a backwater planet named Basil, a punishment for a love affair she had had at the time. Now, initially, the plan is to send her back to Basil as a kind of bait for the Honored Matres, but the sister's facilities there are poor, so she's sent to the junction, an Honored Matre stronghold. She eventually makes it back onto Chapter House, but she's sick having been experimented on in the junction. The Spider Queen is a name that the Reverend Mothers have for the great Honored Matre. Anyway, the Spider Queen threw the rest of the sisters who were with Dotulja into the cages of the Futars. Afterwards, one of the Futars let out a bone-chilling scream that froze every one of the Honored Matres, but didn't have the same effect on the Reverend Mother Dotulja. The great Honored Matre came to the conclusion then that Dotulja is too valuable to kill. They do tell her though, that they want to meet the Reverend Mothers at the junction in 100 standard days. So the Reverend Mothers and the Honored Matres, at the Honored Matres suggestion, are going to meet. Teg, who is a full mentat now with his memory restored, suggests that a feint, which is a kind of attack only meant as a distraction but not the actual goal, suggests a feint at Gamu and striking the Honored Matres base at Junction. Teg had studied the Junction from when it was a guild base. At this time, they have 90 standard days to get ready. Finally, it's Mubilla's time to go through the agony. She's at that point in her Bene Gesserit training. She's ready. She'll have spice and essence injected into her mouth for the procedure. She's laying on a table and shortly after ingesting the bitter liquid, she loses touch with her body. Her body is still writhing in pain, but she's removed from it. She senses Duncan at her side. 
She connects with some past lives. She survives the agony, but her relationship with Duncan starts to change because the Reverend Mothers don't share secrets of the heart. They see danger in love. She also sees their baby making as not necessarily a negative project for the Bene Gesserit. He realizes then that he will lose Morbilla one way or another. The Reverend Mothers all convene in a kind of assembly in the common room of the no-ship. Important decisions are to be made today about their fate and their plan moving forward. Odrade spoke in compelling tones, just short of voice. Actions have been taken that require me to meet on junction with honoured Matre leadership, a meeting from which I may not emerge alive. I probably will not survive. That meeting will be partly distraction. We are about to punish them. We will faint at Gamu. That should drive honoured Matre allies to junction. We then will take junction and I hope capture the spider queen the attack will occur while you're on junction this question came from garimi a sober-faced proctor directly below odrade that's the plan i will be transmitting my observations to the attackers eventually odrade arrives and she transmits this information to tag no one to greet her but odrade saw a familiar structure down a paved lane to her left obvious space skilled artifact with a recent tower added she spoke of the tower as she glanced around her giving the in-plane transmitter data on a change from Teg's ground plan. Nobody who'd ever seen a guild building could mislabel this place though. So this was like other junction planets. Somewhere in guild records, there doubtless was a serial number and code for it. So long under guild control before honored matres that in these first moments of debarking, getting their ground legs, everything around them could be seen to have that special guild flavor. Even the playing field, designed for outdoor meetings of navigators in their giant containers of melange gas. The guild flavor. It was compounded of Ixian technology and navigator design. Buildings wrapped around space in the most energy-conserving way. Paths direct. Few sidewalks. They were wasteful and only the gravity bound needed them. No flowery plantings near the landing flat. They were susceptible to accidental destruction. And that permanent greyness to all construction. Not silver but as dull as Talaxu's skin. Teg and his team are on their way to Gamu. None of them around him questioned any longer that this was their famous Bashar in a child's body. They took his orders with brisk acceptance. He thinks about his abilities again. He suspected a wild outcropping in Atreides' genes. Marker cells had been identified in him, but not their purpose. It was the heritage Bene Gesserit breeding mistresses had meddled with for eons. There was little doubt they would view this ability as something potentially dangerous to them. They might use it it, but he would certainly lose his freedom. He had warned his key squad leaders, especially about Futars. The possibility that humanoid beasts might be allies could not be overlooked. Rebels who had helped Gola Idaho escape from Gamu had insisted Futars were created to hunt and kill honored Matres. Teg held elements of the entire force responsive to his combat, and responsibility was heavy. This is only a feint. We go in and out after inflicting serious damage. Junction is our real target. Odrade's parting admonition lay there in memory. Honored Matres must be taught a lesson such as never before. Attack us and you get hurt badly. Eventually Odrade and the great Honored Matre meet and they have a lengthy discussion with some riddles and passive aggressive jests. Then the great Honored Matre offers Odrade a glass of wine. The one sip was enough. Odrade's senses detected a foreign substance and she was several heartbeats identifying its purpose, to nullify the share protecting me from their probes. She adjusted her metabolism to render the substance harmless, then announced what she had done. Turns out, though, that the Great Honored Matre's aid, Logno, had poisoned the Great Honored Matre, in essence saving Odrade for now, and announcing herself the Great Honored Matre. There was no need to look at Dama. The moment of Spider Queen's death was visible on Logno's face. Turning, Odrade confirmed it. Dama lay in a heap under being unknown. You will call me Great Honored Matre, Logno said, and you will learn to thank me for it. She, pointing at the red heap in the balcony corner, intended to betray you and exterminate your people. I have other plans. I am not one to destroy a useful weapon at the moment of our greatest need. We're with Mabella now, who is making an observation. There were battles all around Junction, bursts of light on dark side, grey eruptions on day side, a major engagement directed by Teg centered on the Citadel, a giant mound of guild design with a new tower near its rim. Although Odrade's vital signs transmissions had stopped abruptly, her early reports confirmed that Great Honored Matre was in there. The need to observe from a distance helped Mubella's sense of detachment 
but she felt the excitement. Odrade at that moment had taken direct sight from the tower. Logno had silenced her vital signs transmissions with a counter signal shield and brought her to the tower shortly after the arrival of the first refugees from Gamu. No one questioned Logno's supremacy. A dead, great honored Matre, and a lived one, could only be something familiar. Expecting to be killed at any moment, Odrade still gathered data as she went up in a null tube with guards. A sudden burst of noises erupted beyond the hall. Odrade identified some of them. Boots of soldiers made a distinctive sound on tiles. Swish of exotic fabrics. Voices. She distinguished accents of honored Matres responding to each other in tones of shock. We're winning. The new Spider Queen was revealed now as someone even stranger than Odrade had suspected. Logno left her console and came to within a pace of Odrade. You have won this battle. We are your prisoners. Teg found Odrade and her captives, a party of honored Matres, while seeking a place to assess victory. Battle always required its analytical aftermath, especially from a Mentat commander. Then he realizes that there's something weird about the whole scene. Was this a trap? He experienced gripping fear. Not an unusual fear in battle, but he had learned to read it. Something profoundly wrong. Noises, things within his view, the smells took on a new intensity. He felt himself acutely attuned, a predatory animal in the jungle, knowing his terrain but aware of something intrusive that must be identified lest he become hunted instead of hunter. When he returned to his examination of the scene, he saw another disturbing thing. A basic oddity his eyes had tried to report. Very little blood on those fallen figures in Bene Gesserit uniforms. You expected battle casualties to show that ultimate evidence of common humanity flowing red that darkened on exposure, but always left its indelible mark in the memories of those who saw it. Lack of bloody carnage was an unknown, and in warfare, unknown had a history of bringing extreme peril. He spoke softly to Audrade. They have a weapon we have not discovered. So just to explain this a bit, earlier in the book, the honored Matres are talking about something they only refer to as the weapon. Only 300 units of the weapon survived the disaster. Each could be used only once, provided the council, which held the charge, agreed to arm them. Great Honored Matre, controlling the weapon itself, had only half of that awful power. Weapon without charge was merely a small black tube that could be held in the hand. With its charge, it cuts a brief swath of bloodless death across the arc of its limited range. At the time, the Matres were looking to have the Ixians, who didn't understand the function of this weapon, to duplicate it. Shiana, meanwhile, is on Chapter House on the Desert Watch and she can smell her tiny worms. She contemplates their quest to turn Chapter House into a new dune. Later, while walking the desert, a night breeze from drylands to moister places behind her deposited a film of dust on her cheeks and nose, lifting the edges of her hair as it passed. She felt saddened. What might have been? That no longer was important. The things that are they matter. She took a deep breath. Cinnamon stronger. Melange. Spice and worms near. Worms aware of her presence. How soon would this air be dry enough for the sandworms to grow great and work their crop as they had done on Dune? Meanwhile, Mabilla has met with a group of honored Matres who are under the impression that she was undercover in captivity with the Bene Gesserit, but is still on the Matres' side. She tells them that she trained with Mother Superior and was allowed to become one of them one of the Reverend Mothers. The Honored Matres recognize that she is an asset because she knows the location of Chapter House, but they're still suspicious of her. Eventually, she's brought to the new Honored Matre, Logno. It does not go well, and eventually it all comes to a head. You dare call yourself Honored Matre, returning her attention to Logno. Everything about you is a cesspool. You have no style. It was too much. Logno attacked, left foot slashing outward with blinding speed. Mubella grasped the foot as she would catch a wind-blown leaf and continuing the flow of it, levered Logno into a threshing club that ended with her head pulped on the floor. Without pausing, Mubella pirouetted, left foot almost decapitating the Arnott Matre who had stood at Logno's right, the right hand crushing the throat of the one who had stood at Logno's left. It was over in two heartbeats. Odrade is also killed in this moment by another honored matre. Well within Teg's original timeline, Mubella picked her honored matre entourage and returned to Chapter House. She expected certain problems and the messages she'd sent ahead paved way for solutions. I bring futars to attract handlers. Honored matres fear a biological weapon from the scattering that made vegetables of them. Handlers may be the source. When she gathers the council on Chapter House, they eventually submit to her as Mother Superior and 
and great honoured Matre, because they know she defeated Logno and the others. Reverent mothers must be taught a new diplomacy, getting along with no one, not even with each other. It would grow easier in time, honoured Matres slipping into Bene Gesserit ways. One day, there would be no honoured Matres, only reverent mothers with improved reflexes and augmented knowledge of sexuality. One day, Shayana and some others create a diversion in order to escape. We have diverted the commies in this room, Karimi said. They show us having a snack and questioning you about weapons. Idaho felt a knot in his stomach. Bell's people would spot a simulation quickly, especially a projected mock-up of himself. Garimi responded to his frown. We have allies and archives. Chiana said, We're here to ask if you wish to leave before we escape in the ship. He chooses not to leave the ship, obviously. Idaho sat back and waited. Liftoff was a skull-rattling moment of blankness that stopped abruptly when they were far enough clear of the surface to engage. During this travel, when Shayana worries about how much data they might have lost, Duncan remarks, We're an unidentifiable ship in an unidentifiable universe, isn't that what we wanted? Duncan, Shayana, Garimi, and Saitel the Tilaxu, and let's not forget Teg, have escaped Chapter House. Mubella does not take this well. Mubella felt that an age had passed since she recognized Duncan's decision. Vanish into space? Leave me? The unvarying time sense of the agony told her only seconds had elapsed since awareness of his intentions, but she felt that she had known this from the first. He must be stopped. Mubella's lips went thin. Damn them. Duncan and Shayana. Teg. Sightail. All of them gone and no way to follow. But we still have the Axeltal tanks. And Idaho cells from our children. Not the same, but close. He thinks he's escaped. Mubella has these inner conversations with Odrade, by the way. And Odrade tells her the following in their inner dialogue, memory sharing. It's the next phase. Muadib to Tyrant to Honored Matres to us to Shayana. To what? Can't you see it? The thing is right there at the lip of your thoughts. Accept it as you would swallow a bitter drink. Mobella shuddered. See it? The bitter medicine of a Shiana future? We once thought all medicines had to be bitter, or they were not effective. No healing power in the sweet. Must it happen, Da? Some will choke on that medicine but the survivors may create interesting patterns. In the final chapter of Chapter House, we meet a pair named Daniel and Marty. Marty thinks that Daniel will let the no-ship with Shiana, Duncan, Saitel, and Teg get away deliberately. It's a friendly conversation between the two, and they kind of talk in riddles, not outright admitting it, but more talking around it. These might be the allies that the group had in archives, but that's not confirmed. And yeah, that is the end of Chapter House Dune. Thank you for listening.